put Wiley on the spot and get into some hot button issues of the day in a segment we like to call Tell Us, Marcellus. Let's start with Eli Manning, who had a rough night against the Eagles yesterday, throwing a pick, taking a bunch of sacks, and generally looking lost and overmatched the whole game. Today, Pat Shermer said he still believes in Eli, but after the game, Eagles linebacker Nigel Bradham actually said he looks forward to playing against the aging quarterback, saying, quote, I mean, I didn't really get the chance to go up against him early in his career, so this is all I know. Just going against Eli in general is a big blessing, a big opportunity to be able to make plays on him. All right, tell us, Marcellus, does Eli deserve all the blame for the Giants' struggle? Absolutely, all the blame. I mean, everything. And I never thought I'd see Eli Manning become a limo. And you know, I told you about the limos before. <laughs> coaches like, oh, Saturday film session, right before we got curfew, coaches got a red dot on somebody. And I never thought it would be on Eli. He's like, make sure he gets to the game tomorrow because that's how we're going to win. We got somebody on our team, but he's wearing their colors. And it's Eli Manning, man. I mean, opponents are looking forward to playing him because they're going to pad them stats. Uh, his teammates are talking about him, whether it's Odell suggesting it or other players reportedly saying it. Uh, executives are saying Take the name off the back of the jersey. He's horrible. That's what executives are now going on record saying. So, yeah, Eli Manning, man, he's thinking it up to a place where everyone's seeing it. Man, y'all put me in a position where I got to defend Eli Manning, <laughs> and I'm going to. All right. Because I'm just going to – Nigel Bradham and all these guys talking smack, this is weak. This is coward. You know why they're going after Eli? What? Because he don't wear one of them 70s or 60s up front and can actually touch them the next time – he sees them. He, them offensive linemen are the reason why this dude's running his mouth and he can get to Eli. Again, I'm not saying Eli's great, but when you have that little time to throw the football, that's what gets defensive players excited. So I'd rather hear Nigel run his mouth about them big guys up front. And man, I can't wait to see them next time. But, well, but he won't say that because they can lay hands on him. Eli's a quarterback. He can't. Well, he's looking past them because he's like, even if you do lay hands on me, Eli ain't going to get rid of the ball. He ain't, he, Eli's not going to make the right decision. Eli's not going to do the right things. Every single Why are you saying that, man? This dude got two Super Bowls. Oh, so that's how we play it? No. I, it, Look, when I was sorry, I was sorry. I could not hang up all pros on the years. I was sorry. Like, that's then, this is If he now. had time to throw, he would look better. You oh, do. oh, no, Jason. You know football. Once he is off script, once the first read is off, the, off for oh, him, you know what happens? The play is dead. He validates why there are 2.0 quarterbacks coming. He is the validation. He is one of the changing of guard, one of the the last gatekeepers of the stand in the pocket to be a pure pocket passer. That's dead for one reason. These moments when the play breaks down because he can't move. He's standing in the Bermuda Triangle. There is no <laughs> pocket. All right, to another team with a lot of drama this year, the Steelers, who have been dealing with noise around Le'Veon Bell's holdout and Antonio Brown's annex during their disappointing start to the year. Now Steelers legend Heinz Ward says he finds all the off-field drama is embarrassing. All right, tell us, Marcellus, you have an issue with Heinz Ward's comments surfing in here. Yeah, I do, man, and it's sad. Look, uh, this is a tough job. Uh, once you, a uh, former player, come up here and now have to talk about the game, Heinz Ward and his position, it's a tough place because there's a lot of traps out there. And one of the traps is to forget where you came from. And it's interesting that Heinz Ward fell for the trap that most of us, when we retire and we become broadcasters, we become better players. Wait a minute. How that record changed the farther you get away from the game and we become perfect citizens. Because Hans Ward had his issues, and he played with guys who had issues. Big Ben was on that team. Joey Porter was on that team. Antonio Brown was on that team. James Harrison, my dog, was on that team. And now you're embarrassed? Were you embarrassed when you were there? So this is what one of the traps that's out there <laughs> as a former player. You start be, the, the, the self-righteous indignation, how we just start – Oh, I can't believe that. And it just sounds a little holier than now. And it's you know what? Listening to you talk, we need to get my former college coach on here, Paul Shadell, mm. our head coach, mm. because I got to be honest, I was a locker room cancer. Mm. I mean, mm. I was a malcontent. I complained about everything. Yeah. I was late to everything. And then to sit up here and listen to me trash Odell <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm my saying. Co my coach is like, what? <laughs> and when I could b b uh, dye his hair and be popular, he would have done all that. <laughs> so, 
Right? Yeah, now you right. get it, right? <laughs> I'm saying, it, it's trapped out there. This dude fell for it. Like, it's a temptation. And, and it's crazy. People come up to me on the streets, oh, my God, you were amazing as a player. I was like, I was all right at times, and sometimes I was really good. But it just gets grander when you leave the game, your playing career, and you start looking at things in a grander scope like you were better than that. You used to do the same things, if not worse. So that's why I don't like stuff. Yeah, I was a headache. I was a headache. I got 1.0 of my first semester. The coaches were livid. All right, finally, <laughs> let's move to some NBA drama where Jimmy Butler's feud with the T-Wolves has reached a fever pitch. Well, now the Minnesota Star Tribune reports that a Bulls insider traces Jimmy's annex to his friendship with Mark Wahlberg, Marky Mark. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> writing quote, the suggestion was that Jimmy came into the league driven by his underdog status, and that changed a few years later when he started hanging out with Marky Mark and seeing himself as a star. All right, tell us, Marcellus, do you blame Mark Wahlberg for Butler losing his mind? Boy, you just earned your money. You had to say that. Huh? You had to ask this question. <laughs> so ignorant. I mean, your, your friends, all of a sudden, you, you hang with Mark Wahlberg. What does that sound like? What does that look like? Two brunches a year? I mean, like, you're not with Mark Wahlberg. One, he's busy. Two, no, no, I you, think they say they hang out kind of on the regular. They, okay, they texting and, you know, they boy. I know Mark Wahlberg because he's partners with one of my best friends from college, and they just started a new company. Guess what? Uh, Mark Wahlberg is way busier than what we, we think and what we lean on to. And to attach that to him and say, you Hollywood, because you got a Hollywood friend, this is not that. This is a guy who had to climb up the mountain, who was uh, a scrappy player, who has overachieved maybe based on what his physical skills were, and is now opening up and unveiling who he really is. That happens all walks of life all the time where you shouldn't make a day one assessment of who someone is. Let the person breathe and grow in that room. He's a four-time NBA All-Star now. You think he's going to act like he's just a puppy again? I don't know, man. I will tell you something. I was probably 170 pounds, and then I started listening to Heavy D, the rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. It changed all of me. And I, what? No, I'm joking. See, I'm about to say, the, the fat boys didn't get you first? <laughs> no, man. I, I, could, I kind of buy into this a little bit. How? You start, you an athlete. I see athletes all the time start running with these celebrities in other fields, and they want to be a little bit of drama kings. And, again, I, that's what I concern. my concern is with LeBron moving out here to L.A. And next thing you know, you kick him with DiCaprio and Al Pacino, and you start taking on them Hollywood ways, man, but how come, rather than the athletic ways. Well, well, they, there is a difference in that, but I'm not blaming that on Mark Wahlberg because this is a guy who had an underdog mentality, and what comes with an underdog mentality is you're understated. But then you realize, I'm not the underdog now. I'm the favorite. I'm the man. And it has nothing to do with Mark Wahlberg. It's by I've earned the right to now speak up, and I can be the one that's bringing the noise instead of the one that's always got to sit quietly. I don't know. I, I, I make it a point not to have Hollywood friends. I try to keep my friends from back in the day. I like broke friends, to be honest with you. <laughs> so you can feel like the man. I keep huh? that broke mentality. I, I like to have a broke mentality. It keeps me hungry. All right, coming up, a football legend defended Kanye's White House visit yesterday. We'll get into that and the best and worst of social media. <laughs> Firestone tires for 30 days. If you don't love them, we'll refund or replace. So go ahead. 